And I'll be, let's, let's just also acknowledge, like, there's nothing, I'll just, like, there's nothing you can do if the players don't care. Like, mm. at the end of the day, you know, it's like, I don't care how good of a GM you are, like, the players are the driving energy of the game. Like, like I truly feel like the weird thing about all these tabletops as a GM is weirdly it's like, you're a one person Greek chorus. Like you're the supporting mm -hmm. cast. The story has to follow what's happening out there. And I feel like there's a weird analogy I always like of like, you find out when you're baking, you'll find out what you didn't put into the mix in the oven. Like you find out yeah. way too late what's not there. <laughs> yeah. And I feel that way all the time when people make characters and they'll get three or four sessions into something and be like, it's not clicking for me. Is there, there's something happened this session that wasn't fun. And you're like, it has nothing to do with this session. You made a character with no connection to the world that they're from. Ooh. Or you made a character that has no history. And be, it, like people, there's like complicated things about backstory. I don't think you need all the backstory in the world. What backstory is there to do is to give you a sense of trajectory. Mm -hmm. Where you are coming from informs where you are going. And it's the yeah. going that's essential. So people will be like, I don't need backstory. And you're like, cool, where's your momentum coming from? Like what's, how are you moving? Because if you start with someone who's like, what's up? I have a, a class and spells and magical gear and literally no desires and no attachments. And you're like, buddy, that's enlightenment. I don't know what to tell you. You're actually done, you we win. You beat the game. You beat the game. You have no attachments and no desires? You have no goals? No enemies or friends? Who are you? So yeah, that stuff I think is momentum and it create, if you, there's precious little I feel I can do if a player doesn't have those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Zach, yes, and Brennan. The long-awaited meeting between Times New Roman and Comic Sans. I see you haven't brought any serifs with you. <laughs> Perhaps that's where the sans and your name comes from. Sans from the French without. I see you have brought your entire centurion forces behind you. New centurions for a new century, my friend. I'm gonna straight up kill you. <laughs> I understand that your forces are to be taken seriously, but I am a man of the people, <laughs> and I wish that you would see that in your heart. What mercy do you think you will find in my heart? The fields behind me are littered with the bodies of fonts braver and more cunning than you. Baskerville lies dead in the dust. <laughs> Apple Chancery is uh, nothing but a distant memory. I struck down Helvetica. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think your posted, handwritten invitation on an old school blog, come to my birthday party this weekend, I want to insinuate that it's going to be fun. <laughs> By the time I'm done with you, you're gonna look like webdings, my friend. Don't Ooh. you mean wingdings? What? <gasps> <laughs> Uh, yes. Is it wing days or is it web days? Isn't God? I, hope it's I think wing days. I think it's both. I'm not sure if they're the same thing. But mm. I consider part of my job here to just supply Brennan with ideas for future seasons of Dimension Twenty. <laughs> I would say um, to put this in the context of a home game, so that this is actually useful. Um, I would say, what the hell are rails, right? And essentially, what people in a home game refer to as rails is they mean like what's my role as the storyteller here? Because I know that all of us are great storytellers, but I also know how much the three of us know that we're really not the storyteller, that you are that Greek chorus. Yeah. Like, if you're not any of the protagonists, to what degree are you the fucking storyteller at all, right? Yeah. And I have an analogy that's been bopping around in my head for a little bit that I think does explain rails, at least as I like to think of them. And I will do this in less than five minutes. I'm so sorry. Run the clock. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> what I'm looking for when I'm a player is full immersion. I don't want the experience of being a storyteller when I'm a PC. Yeah. And that's a little bit of a different thing. Like a lot of indie games want a flat hierarchy on the table where everybody's typed as a storyteller. I don't want that when I'm a player. Mm -hmm. When I'm a player, I want to be living in a story immersed into a character that is not, to their knowledge, living in a story. Like Evan Kelp says in Misfits yeah. and Magic, I'm not a character, Yeah. right? I don't want to play a character that's thinking about their fucking narrative arc. I want to play a character that wants to save the world as quickly and efficiently as possible, right? <laughs> yeah. But I, the player, 
want the arc. So me and my character exist at odds because mm. I want the deep immersion. I want the fucking Mount Doom, Frodo's quest, all that shit. But the, I want to play a character that doesn't want that. I want to play a character that gets the ring as quickly and safely as possible to Mount Doom because that's the immersion I'm looking for. So what does that mean to if I want to provide that experience to a player? Players are like water. They are going down the hill as fast as they can, seeking the path of least resistance. That's that the character is like water. But the player wants anything other than a straight line. So my job as rails is irrigating a path down that that lets the water always have taken the fastest route towards its goal, but at the end of it, the shape is the most convoluted and pleasing, mm -hmm. right? That like you achieved the shape of a story while you were trying your hardest to go in a straight line. That makes sense. I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's Shoot. really cool. That's really good. Uh, uh, so nice. that, so I'm different now. <laughs> <laughs> you should do this for a living. Yeah. Oh man. Um, uh, <laughs> but that, so that, that to me, that's what rails are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The the rail, like my job when I'm telling a story is not to have a story in mind for you to go on. I really think about myself as improvising in reaction to the players with a bag full of lots and lots of storytelling tropes, mm -hmm. right? That is literally like, I'm in reaction to you, you're driving, but I have I have a double helix, I have a weird S, I have this roundabout and this clover leaf. I have these shapes that I'm gonna throw in front of you because I know you're trying to go straight, but I know you'll be sad if you do. Yeah. So that's what a DM's rails are to me. It's reactions to that desire of the PCs, knowing that the player wants one thing and the character wants another, and they'll be most pleased if they both get their way, which you can do with cleverly improvised rails. Nice. Yeah. Brennan? I know what's going on here. I know what's going on here. Okay? I do. Do you? And if you want me to wander backstage to spill the beans. I mean, there's really no need for us to do that because it's the final question, These other right? two are in the loop, so. They're in the loop. I'm the only one? one out of the loop, it would seem. <laughs> and if we check my point total here, I don't need to walk to the front because I know what it is. It's a big old goose egg, gang. It's a fat zero. Hello, a little late addition to the numerical symbol chart brought to us from our friends in Arabia. A little bit of trivia that I happen to know about the history of numbers. That kind of little tidbit would serve me well in most trivia games, unless it had been rigged from the beginning. Whoa, dude. Whoa, dude. Oh, whoa, dude. I've only just begun to pull the thread on this sweater, friends. You would think in a game where there were only two possible correct choices that one would stumble into the right answer every so often, wouldn't you? In fact, the probability of never guessing right in the full game is a statistical wonder. And yet, here we are. <laughs> Introduced at the top of the game as a champion, what do you think that means? Icarus flying too close to the sun, but it seems Daedalus, our little master crafter over here, had some wax wings of his own, didn't he? <laughs> Wanted to see his sun fall, fall from the sky. Oh, how close to the sun he flew. Well, I'm not having it. I solved your labyrinth, puzzle master. The Minotaur's escaped, and you're gonna get the horns, buddy. <laughs> Okay, are we? Can I tell did you we what? Think the we thing were is? in on it, but actually, Brennan is the only one in on it, and that was rehearsed. <laughs> that was an incredible monologue, Brennan. What is the rule of the game? Can we all I say? I cannot win. That is correct, Brennan. You cannot win the game. Uh... Ah! <laughs> ah! Did we all get crowns? Uh, no, we only got two. God. Before we finish this up, though, we do have the important question. Ooh. What are your favorite GM snacks? Yeah, Brennan. Let me be clear. Come this on, was put. Hobbit. This was put into this fucking questionnaire to come for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna explain something. Mm -hmm. If you're at home and you're afraid to tell your gaming group that you're a snacker, I've got your back, okay? Because it's okay to fucking snack, all right? 
when you're out there, let some of us sweat from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. Some of our bodies are betraying us constantly. Would I have chosen this paper white, fur covered, constantly sweating body? No, I wouldn't have. Does it require constant almonds? Yes. <laughs> Almonds all the time, okay? And I'm not gonna apologize because these two fucking elevated beings, these two hovering, uh, uh, what, what's the, what, what are the pre, the pre skexy pre-mystic light beings from the dark crystal? Oh God. You two, some of us are pod people, okay? I'm a little podling and I need to snack. If I could have another mouth in my back, <laughs> So that I could, the biggest obstacle in my GMing, all right, uh -huh. is that the same place I talk from is where the food needs to go. <laughs> we know what to get him for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> a mouth in my bag. <laughs> so that I can have a friend shoveling salami into an open <laughs> furnace in my torso <laughs> while I narrate. And I'm not sorry. I like to snack. To answer your question, almonds. <laughs>